Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. Hi, today's tip and trick video is going to go over composition and also I'm going to uh, specifically talk about thumbnails. And this relates to watercolor because depending on the style of watercolor that you like to do, uh, whether it's very realistic or it uh, is in the semi-realistic realm, your uh, pr planning before you do the actual watercolor can really make a difference. And composition is one of those things that is uh, kind of the backbone of your painting and it kind of holds everything else together. So uh, being able to uh, compose a piece and uh, get that part out of the way before you actually start the painting is a very important part of the process. So I thought, first of all, I would go through a few of these uh, pictures. And before I do that, I wanted to do a quick uh, instructional uh, piece about um, just kind of the basics of composition. And when you think of your painting surface, whether it's a rectangle or a square or somewhere in between, it could be a very long, narrow piece, all of these... Uh, layouts have a, a composition that uh, will help you kind of lay out your painting and uh, these are not these are sort of rules but they are made to be broken so if you uh, really understand composition and you want to uh, play with uh, these rules as uh, in air quotes, um, as we like to call them, then uh, you can do that. So, but this gives you a groundwork. And so when you're thinking of your uh, shape, whatever uh, one you're going to do, if you divide it into three, and there are other ways to think about laying out your painting, but, and this is not perfect, uh, but where those lines meet up, any one of those four areas is a good place to put your center of interest. Now, these other areas might have a secondary uh, center of interest or it might even be a third somewhat center of interest, but your main focus might pick one of those areas. So this might be your main center of interest. And then maybe there's a smaller center of interest over here in this image. Now in a square, sometimes you will see everything very centered. So whatever it is might be right here in the center, but you can also divide it into three and then your center of interest could be a little offset so that where your eye is drawn uh, could be a little bit to one side or the other or down. Um, it can also help pull you around. So maybe there are some lines or something that help pull you from something down here up to the bigger shape. So uh, with a square, you can play with uh, that as well. And then same thing with this very long, whoops, long shape. When you divide it into three, then that can help decide or give you an idea of where you put your center of interest. Now, if your center of interest, say, is someone's face and maybe their eyes are over here, so they're maybe not right on the exact center of interest, uh, as long as it's somewhat close to that area, then, then that works generally as well. Okay, so uh, to give you an idea for what I think about, when I am going to take uh, a photograph and I work from my own photographs, okay, hopefully that will help just a little bit. And when I go to take my photographs, I am always considering these kinds of things with composition. So uh, I'm thinking about maybe where my center of interest is. I'm also thinking about uh, big shapes, medium shapes, and small shapes. 
And I'm thinking about leading lines, anything that can help pull me toward my center of interest. Um, and when I'm taking photographs, I will often compose and maybe I will have an image that I don't have to adjust because I have pre-thought about it and I'm composing in my camera. But there are situations where I just maybe have taken the photograph because I need to take it or because um, the light is changing or uh, I can't quite get everything to fit where I would want it to fit. And I know that I can adjust in um, my image before I would put it on my watercolor paper to make the composition work. So in this particular image, and these are ones that I just pulled out of my photos right quick and I haven't spent a lot of time looking at them, but uh, this flower right here being one of the larger flowers is probably a little too far to the left so it would need to move just a touch more over and then these guys which make a nice line um, might need to move in just a little bit as well it's fine to have a gap in there and there is a bud which is probably a little hard to see but there's a bud back here that hasn't opened and there's a nice little bit of reflection from this one down here um, generally having objects that are in the odd number so one three five is more pleasing to uh, a viewer in that it's a little more dynamic um, if you have two objects it's generally a little more static and there's not as much uh, movement going on in the image also if you have a diagonal line or a curve that can be interesting and um, pull your attention and help lead you through the image so um, this one could require moving that over a little bit and then maybe um, moving these guys over just a touch. You could make this into an actual bud with a little bit of the pink showing so that it would uh, make this um, an uneven number then. One, two, three, four, five. So there's that one. Um, this one is very interesting because you have that diagonal line of the lily pad behind this main center of interest and you do need to be careful when you have a circle that depending on where that circle is it can pull your eye and this is just a little um, it's not straight on so that uh, works still however I would probably not use this as a vertical image I would probably crop it down and make a uh, square out of it uh, just because I think that would would make a nice uh, square image with the diagonal and the flower sitting there. Um, now that is something to play with. So uh, I can either take um, just a piece of paper and I could uh, crop it, either uh, go square and, and actually be able to see that on my photograph. I tend now to do most of my cropping and adjusting in my photo software. So I could literally, if I wanted to in my photo software, uh, cut uh, this shape out and I could copy it and I could move it over and I could have two of those or three of those or, you know, things like that in the photo software. Now, the other option would possibly be to uh, maybe make it a uh, long, narrow painting and have the flower to the left and then some of those other shapes on the right. And some of this is not um, like there is one good way to do this painting. Uh, it could be that you just need to play with it and find the, the shapes and the composition that you like. Um, it could also be a vertical. So I could do it this direction and have uh, the, the long narrow um, uh, width and then have it be a taller vertical shape. And that would, I think that's a nice uh, composition right there. And maybe I even like that better than a square option. So, because you see more of the lily pad there. Okay, uh, this one is pretty straightforward. It's one single lily. Um, there are a few lines behind that give it some direction. Um, and it might just be that for this one, I just take off some on uh, the right side and then maybe it would just be a square image with the water lily in the center. Now what makes this a little more interesting than um, maybe some square uh, compositions is that those lily pads have a diagonal to them and there's a little bit of a diagonal going on with some of these um, 
petals on the lily pad or on the lily. So it kind of helps pull you through and makes it interesting that way. And uh, not much more for that one. So here we have an instance with two lilies and uh, they are offset in my photo. So I don't have them sitting right in the center, but um, this might be where I use uh, another photo and I don't know if I have any more of that. I don't. Um, but I've seen enough water lilies now that I might go ahead and put a bud over here so that, or um, maybe down in here so that there is something um, to offset those two big lilies and give me some interest over on the left side. Uh, one of the other things I would be careful of when you are looking at your composition, your photographs, is that when two edges meet where the top of this lily petal is kind of touching uh, the back edge of this lily pad, that's called a tangent. And when you have two lines that just barely meet, um, that can pull your eye and it can feel like the objects aren't necessarily in a three-dimensional space. So I would probably make uh, the petals on this lily pad either come up higher or I would bring down the lily uh, pad itself so there wouldn't be these dark spaces in here so that the lily feels like it's sitting in front of this back lily pad. All right, and here again is our two uh, lily uh, blooms and they are sitting apart from each other. So for this one, I would probably move this bloom over in here so that it's closer to this lily and uh, there's, and maybe even down some so that it's got some movement to it that way. And I would maybe crop it uh, so that it's a smaller image. It could be rectangular, rectangular, or it could be square. And uh, you can do two. It won't be as maybe interesting as having three uh, subjects in there, but um, it might be fine. And it might also be that I decide I just want to do the lily itself and some of the water. And so you could leave this one out completely. Okay. Um, this one in general, I really like. I like the fact that there's sort of a triangle going on with the three lilies. There's uh, one in the back back there and then these two. And then having the uh, reflection of this one uh, helps kind of pull you through just a really nice uh, lily pad itself with the curve of the line leading you up to those guys. So for this one, it might just be taking some off the edge of the image itself so that uh, it's just doesn't have as much going on on these two edges. So I could just kind of crop in on those uh, two sides. And I could even if I wanted to zoom in a little more, I could uh, even just come in right there as well. And you don't necessarily need all of those things on the edges. Okay. And then this one is okay. Uh, it's just kind of four pieces. There's no real main center of interest. Um, you might be able to crop it down to, to do uh, some portion of it like that, but still there's no, like this lily right here being smaller is not necessarily going to be my main center of interest. And it's actually in the foreground. These guys are all bigger. Um, none of them are turned enough so that you can see their centers. So just in general, it's probably not one that I will ever do anything with, but um, yeah, it's, you know, just part of the process when I'm out taking photos I take hundreds and hundreds of photos of, uh, of an area and or an object and I may just end up with 10 to 30 that I really like. Um, and so part of the process then for me is I don't always do this on paper anymore. A lot of it is done in my photo software and uh, but it's something that I learned in college and in my art classes to do a thumbnail. And so if you've not heard of a thumbnail, that's what I will do next. And a thumbnail basically is doing a small, could be two inches by three inches. It could be, let's see, that's about two inches. Yeah, by about three. 
Um, and just give yourself some ideas of how you might lay this out compositionally before you actually do your drawing, before you transfer it to your watercolor paper. Uh, one of the other somewhat rules not that you need to be aware of is that in general, when doing a landscape, dividing your paper in half with half sky, half land is a very static kind of boring composition. So in general, when you're thinking about doing a landscape, putting your the top of your land or your horizon, I should say, uh, line high, and then having this all be land, and this be the sky, or you could do the opposite where you have a lot of sky and not very much land. So I could have, well, maybe my land down in here and all of this be sky. And so if I were using this image to uh, help me uh, lay out some thumbnails, then first of all, for this one, I might, um, if I was going to do a quick composition, and this is a thumbnail, so I am not worried about uh, making this be perfect. I'm just giving myself the basic uh, shapes, and they are really scratchy and scribbly, and and that's just enough to give me a hint of what I'm thinking. Okay, so my evergreen there, I could have that rock there. I'm thinking about adjusting where the tree and the rocks are in the image. So if I were to divide this into threes, you can see I've moved it over to that, uh, that third position over there. And the, the main rock down here, the big one, is kind of in the secondary position and the tree being a dark shape will pull your eye. And then there's another rock here and there. So I'm using also the diagonal and that diagonal here and then it repeats in the land back there helps make this more interesting than my original image. I could still use uh, kind of the clouds wispy up in the sky behind the tree and uh, give it, so I'd want to make this just a little darker. And there's a little bit, some rocks in here. And then the sky has just a little bit of value around the clouds, just a touch darker in there. So that already is better than this original image. Um, I could do a lower composition so that the sky is standing out as the main object and maybe my tree could still be in there, but maybe it's just a smaller uh, shape. I could zoom in on it so that this is just the top of the tree, but I'll just go ahead and kind of redraw it this way for now. And put that in there, darken the bottom. And then my sky could be the main focus. So I might have some very interesting wispy clouds. Maybe I change the sky so that it looks like it's going to rain. Um, and maybe it's darker so that the white clouds or maybe they're gray clouds if it's a darker uh, scene. And then they're a little lighter as it comes down. So I can give myself another um, option with maybe change in weather. Um, also where the land meets the, the sky. Um, go ahead and darken that just a little. And so you see these don't have to take very long, but they can give you some quick ideas just using the shapes that you have and give you some options. And then maybe the last one is a close up of the tree so it'll be the main center of focus and this tree is leaning just a little bit so I want to make that kind of stand out in this image and I'll go ahead and put a rock in in the bush that's back there and there's a second rock bush here and then I'll go ahead and darken this. And this is just uh, the pencil I'm using is my mechanical pencil and it's an HB lead. So, and then I could uh, maybe put a moon up in the 
the sky up there and some marks for stars. And then this would all be uh, dark. And so everything, if you're going to make it a night scene in the image, is going to get, uh, it will change value. It will be deeper in value. There might be light on the tree on the left and it might be all dark on the right. And actually the way I shaded it, it's kind of the opposite right now, but that's okay. Um, same thing with the rock that would be in shadow. And then there would be shadow here as well on the ground. And so I'd want to make sure that I have that on there and um, I can make that adjustment. And because this is a very sunlit day, I actually think the light was overhead um, in this photo because I'm not seeing, I'm seeing a shadow right here, but I'm not seeing shadows on either direction uh, on the land itself from these objects. So I would say that the land, I mean the sky, or, oh my gosh, the sunlight was probably overhead. And that is kind of one of the, the worst day, times of day to take an image is when the sun is directly overhead because you don't get the shadows that help give you the form to your objects. So when you're working with an image like this, then you really have to think about are there shadows where would they be? Where is my light coming from? Uh, is it coming from back here or is it down low? Has the sun started to set? Um, so you need to think about those things as well. So when I then have my thumbnail, whether I've done it on a piece of drawing paper like this, or you could just take a piece of regular watercolor paper and do some thumbnails on that. But if it's on here and I want to try out some colors. I can do that. I just can't work very wet on this piece of paper. So for the last thing, I think I will take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and I have some Quinn magenta sitting here. So I'm going to make kind of a deep blue and this will just give me a quick idea and I'll try to paint around some of the stars as it were. Oops, too many. And I can look at very quickly, do I want to do a night sky? Do I want to use these colors? Now, if I'm doing an actual color study, then I would probably do that on watercolor paper, not on my drawing tablet, but as a quick thumbnail idea, this helps me determine whether or not I even like this idea. And uh, let's see, I have some green out. This is not the right green. Let me see if I can mute it a little bit. There, that's better. So when you have um, a night scene, everything's going to be more muted, not as vibrant. And I would wait for that first color to dry generally, but I'm trying to do this with some speed. Okay, and just do a quick layout there. And some of the other bushes, and these are a little too bright as well. But you get the idea so that you can use your thumbnails that you've got sitting here just as a quick way to test whether or not you, you like that option. And uh, so when you're getting ready to do your, your watercolor, whatever the scene might be, take the time to look at the composition, try some thumbnails, see if there's some other way that you want to adjust uh, your composition and think about how the eye is moving through the scene. Uh, and then, and there is a lot to do with composition. So if you're kind of newer to laying out paintings, then that is a really good subject for you to explore. And in general for watercolors, a uh, the time that it takes to plan and uh, really think about what's going to be in your, in your painting and then plan what colors you might use and 
how it all might lay out can be 70%, 75% of the process, especially if you're doing a very uh, realistic painting. So I do a lot of that um, planning and making sure my drawing is good and that everything is kind of figured out before I start the painting. And then I jump into the actual painting. And so that makes uh, the painting process go a lot easier because I have solved a lot of those issues. And I uh, hope this was helpful to see kind of some compositional guidelines and uh, how to do uh, some thumbnails and that you can also put a little color on them as well to get an idea for if you're wanting to um, change things or paint in, in a certain way for your scene. And if you have a tip, trick, or technique that you would like to see, please leave a comment below and I will try to get to that soon. Thanks. Bye.